Welcome back to another video and today is going to be very helpful for those interested in a career as a credit risk analyst or those just starting out. My name is Sharia and I like to share experiences of working at places such as JP Morgan, Amazon to hopefully give you all a head start in your career. Now today's video is going to be broken up into three main areas. To begin we're going to be looking at what does a credit risk analyst actually do, then we'll be moving on to the skills required to be a CA and lastly we'll be looking at some of the career progression options for a credit risk analyst. But before we begin with any of that, let's just get some definitions out of the way. And the main one we should focus on is what is credit risk? Credit risk is a risk of the customer not paying back the loan that was extended to them. In other words, it's a default risk of the customer. And this is what credit risk analysts will be evaluating as part of their job. Now that we understand what a credit risk analyst does, how do they go about doing it? And the best way to think about it is with the five C's. Now the five C's is a common framework used by credit risk analysts to make sure that they cover all of the major points when evaluating a customer. Now sure, there'll be many other things to consider apart from these five C's, but the five C's allows you to make sure that all of the important points are looked at in a logical manner. Let's explore the five C's in a little more detail to see what a credit risk analyst will be looking out for in each of those categories. And the first one we're going to be looking at is character, and this is the character of the customer. You want to be having a good gut feeling of who you're dealing with and make sure that they're a trustworthy and reliable customer. You want to be finding out why they're undertaking the current project, looking at relevant news articles, and make sure there's no negative associations or affiliations that could impact the creditworthiness. Now moving on from the most objective onto probably the most important, and that is capacity. This is specifically to do with the capacity of the customer to make sure that the project that they're undertaking will generate enough profits to make sure that they can repay the loan. Now when the customer will come to you with the details of their project, whether it's something simple or a very complicated project, it's up to you to make sure that you go into all of the details and understand what the project's about. This will require you to consider several what if scenarios as well as questioning all of the assumptions that the customer has used in order to generate their projected profit. The next point to consider for credit analysts is capital and this is specifically the skin in the game that the customer has in its own project. The natural assumption would be the more confident someone is in the project, they'll put their own money in and make sure no one else can take a slice out of their profit. So it's always a good point for CAs to investigate. If the customer can afford it and has the capital, why haven't they put this into their own project and instead are relying on external third party for funding? The fourth C that CAs will be looking at when evaluating how risky a customer is is collateral. Now this might be the most easiest to understand as it's used in a lot of credit based decisions. But the key thing for credit risk analysts to look into when it comes to collateral is that the collateral should be able to compensate you for what you missed out on if the project goes wrong, namely cash. Now if you look at a very simple example of a mortgage where a house is usually a form of collateral, if things go wrong and the customer can't pay you the required money every month, the bank will normally end up taking the house collateral. Now, in the grand scheme of things, it's quite easy to sell a house and so the cash that you missed out on from the customer unable to pay the mortgage can be recouped by the bank by selling the house. However, with more and more complicated deals comes more and more complicated collateral. Now, a more complicated example could be a customer that you're dealing with who works in the aviation industry. As part of the credit agreement, they might be willing to put up planes as collateral and you might be thinking, great, Planes are worth a lot of money. However, if things go wrong in the deal and the customer can't make their repayments, you will end up having the plane as collateral in your possession. Now, unlike a house, selling planes isn't exactly that can be done every single day. Moreover, it's not even your business of expertise. One other point to consider when you have possession of the planes is that every day you're still holding onto them. You're having to pay storage costs, maintenance costs, Essentially, every day that you have that possession of the collateral, you're losing money and your collateral value is going down. So the key thing to remember when it comes to collateral is that the collateral should easily be able to be converted into cash. Now, the last point to consider for CAs when you've done all of your analysis is to attach potential conditions to the loan. Now, some examples of conditions could be if the share price of the company falls by X amount, then the company has to compensate you or confirming that the money that you lend out can only be used for specific projects. Either way, these conditions will begin at the start of the project and remain in place till the end of the project timeline. So that's the five C's and it's generally a good framework for credit risk analysts to utilize when evaluating a customer or a project. 
as well as generally a few other things that CAs will be doing on an ongoing basis, such as monitoring the conditions of the credit, as well as other projects which could be improving the accuracy of the input data that you use in your modeling. However, one thing I want to make sure all CAs understand, especially at the interview stage, is that a CA's role isn't solely based around that one yes or no decision based on a customer's evaluation. Sure, whether the customer is external or an internal client, such as a salesman or a trader, you're going to have to evaluate that one decision. However, as a credit risk analyst, you not only have that view of that one trade, you have the view of the entire portfolio. And so as a CA, you're in a very privileged position to evaluate the entire portfolio. With that portfolio level view comes the ability for CAs to recommend more riskier trades if a portfolio is doing well. And with more riskier trades comes a potential for higher growth for the company. And that's a great segue onto the next section of the video, which is what are the skills required to succeed as a credit risk analyst. Now in this section, I'm not gonna be focusing on generic skills such as teamwork or Microsoft Excel. Those are skills that you're gonna to have to get at grips with, especially in a finance role. I wanna be focusing on skills which credit risk analysts will be using on a day-to-day -day basis. And the first one is SQL. Now SQL is a data extraction tool, and this is a tool which you'll use on a daily basis to do your portfolio level analysis. As mentioned in the previous section, if you wanna add value as a credit risk analyst, portfolio level analysis is a must. And in turn, SQL knowledge is key. If you've never done SQL before or any kind of coding, you might be put off. However, there's plenty of free tutorials out there on YouTube, Code Academy, or even Skillshare. The next skill that you'll be using on a daily basis is understanding financial statements and their accompanying notes. Financial statements are where you're going to be finding the majority of the information that you need to make a decision. And so it's key that you know how to read the financial statements as well as the notes that accompany them. This is why on a lot of credit risk applications, it's common to see big for experience or professionally qualified accountants as desirable qualifications. Financial statement analysis is a common theme in all CA interviews. So make sure you're familiar with the income statement, balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Now, I also wanna be focusing on soft skills that are very important for CAs. And the first one I wanna look at is the ability to challenge senior management on the data that they give you. Naturally, when a customer will come to you, they're going to try their best to guarantee that their project will be a success. However, as mentioned previously, it's your job to make sure that you question every assumption that the customer is putting out there and used in their own projections. The most important point when it comes to this is not to buckle under the pressure, regardless of how senior the manager is. Whether they're a financial director or a CEO, it's your job to challenge them and make sure you're comfortable with what they're presenting. The next skill that's very important for CAs is time management. Now requests can come in at any time and the urgency of the request can vary. Moreover, when a company goes into liquidation, you need to be able to stop everything at that point and do everything you can to make sure you're aware of how much exposure your company has to that client. The last soft skill I wanna cover is writing skills. And this will probably surprise you considering how I mentioned financial statements are gonna be the cornerstone of all your decision-making. However, writing skills plays a key part in a CA's daily role. Credit risk analysts always need to communicate in writing why they're going to accept a decision or reject it or what kind of conditions they're going to put in. Moreover, if you need senior management approval for your request, you're going to have to concisely explain to them why you think this is a good deal. And on the last section of this video, I wanna be focusing on the career progression of a credit risk analyst. And I think we'll start with the most obvious question, which is salary. Credit risk analysts work in a whole range of industries, so it's not always straightforward to give you salary amounts that a CA will be on, as someone in the financial sector will be on a different pay scale to someone from, say, the technology sector. But I do want to give an overview of the general amounts that you can expect with credit analysts who enter the financial sector being at the higher end, if not slightly above these salary ranges. Getting that credit risk analyst job is a tough and competitive process, and you can see that with the starting salaries being a lot higher than the typical starting salaries expected for graduates. It's also important to note that the increasing trend in bonuses as you become more senior. By the end of year six, you typically be responsible for a large portfolio, if not an entire sector. And this is reflected in the total compensation reaching over 100k by the end of this period. When it comes to working for over six years, there's no point of saying what an average salary is as it'll depend entirely on the skills learned and what value you can show to the firm that you bring. Typically at this level, you'll be in charge of an entire region and be responsible for approving the largest lines that the firm underwrites. The larger lines that you're expected to oversee and manage, the higher you can expect your compensation to reach. Now, in terms of explaining what a credit risk analyst can do in their future career, 
this will sort of be split into two main sections. So the first one will be if you choose to stay as a credit risk analyst, and the second section would be on if you choose to pivot your skills into a new role. For the first point, a credit risk analyst will generally focus on a sector. So whether that's the aviation industry, automotive industry, or media, one of the ways a credit risk analyst would progress their career would be to either stay in their current sector and have a deeper understanding of it, or move into another sector and widen your skills and knowledge. Either way, as you develop your knowledge in all sectors, you'll have more and more approval limits. So for example, as someone in their first or second year, you might have an approval limit of around 50k, whereas after five years of working, you'll become quite senior and you'll be given an approval limit of around 500k. Now the next section of a credit risk analyst progression is about pivoting into another role. And there are a lot of roles that CAs fit into perfectly. Whilst it's impossible to talk about all of the roles that a CA could do, here's some food for thought. When a credit risk analyst receives a request to review a project, they're not only looking at that project in isolation, but they're also looking at all of the inputs required to make that company and project successful. So if you look at a company such as Coca-Cola and they came to you to have a credit extension on the project that they're undertaking, you're not only going to be analyzing the trends in the beverage industry and understand how that's going to impact their revenue stream, you're going to be looking at the raw ingredients required to make the products. So that'll be the commodities market. You'll be looking at the cost required to package a product which again would be a good understanding of supply cycle. And lastly, you'll investigate the potential disruptions that could occur in the distribution channels. With this vast array of knowledge, you could easily leverage this into a lot of specialist consultancy roles, which a lot of career risk analysts don't consider. And that's it for this video. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, make sure you do, and I'll see you all in the next video.